today we are going to start taking all of the conditions that we've talked about um, and also taking <clears throat> the initial description um, that is posted at the website, looking at all of those things one by one and fitting them into the grid that we created during um, the initial um, uh, 101 class, the overview class, um, that turns the conditions for success into learning objectives and content. Um, do you guys all have that up on a screen someplace that you can turn to that grid? <clears throat> Jane, again, what you want us to have up on screen? Jane printed it out. I will share my screen so that you can see what it looks like. Yeah, they do. Thank they you. Do, so that you can look for it. Yes, it's this. I printed it out so I could have the the web page open about what we talked about yep. last time. Yep, but you'll see that it is the um, it's the grid that I posted to the Facebook group a couple of days ago. Um, across the top, it's before the in person sessions, during the in person sessions, and after the in person sessions. Um, and so, so you can tell that that's going to be very doing and then, um, breaking the learning objectives down into knowledge, what must they know and understand, skills, what must they be able to do, beliefs, what must they believe, support, what support do they need, what must they be assured of, oh, there's a D in there, um, uh, what must they feel, and being, what must they value, what must they be. So um, let's start with um, the stuff that we talked about last time, the conditions for uh, success. I'm going to stop sharing the screen so that we can all be with each other. Open that. Is up. this for the entire curriculum or is this? This is for catalytic listening. For a particular session, or do we do this for a particular session? No, nope. what we're going no, to I be... meant is this for the... I'm sorry, uh, go ahead, Susan, I'm sorry. Yeah, what I meant is, is this grid for the entire curriculum of catalytic listening, or is it for a particular session? Nope, we're it... still at the everything. It's the learning objectives for okay. this course. So it's not... It is the learning objectives for um, the catalytic listening course. And so um, that's why you'll notice it says, um, you know, during, during the sessions, uh, before the sessions, after the sessions. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll break down um, what, what we're doing here is we're taking all of the conditions for success and saying if these are the conditions that um, that will lead to the difference we said we wanted this to make for our students. Then how do we how do we make those conditions into actual stuff that they'll learn? Um, what what will it take for um, for instance? So let's let's pull one of them up and let's just start. And and what it will do is well then we'll, from there what we'll be able to do is to say okay. Well, in session one, we can talk about this. And in session two, it makes sense to talk about this. And in session three, it makes sense to talk about this. But we'll already have it all in that grid. So everything we need to actually do will, it will have come out of the conditions, and it'll be right there in, in that one document. So um, now let's just play with it. Um, What we started with um, that students would need to be assured of that they'll better understand the people they're listening to. Um, what is what is an objective for that? Um, what what do they need to know in order to better understand the people that they're listening to? They need to know each other first. Get to know each other. 
you talked about the catalytic, the 101 being a prerequisite to this. So mm -hmm. that's something they need to, wherever that best fits, it needs to be on that first call before the sessions. Yep. Hildy, I wanted to, to, maybe a thread in this is, I really like how you've got it laid out on the chart. There's a sense of pre and post assessment, um, or in this case, pre and post um, self assessment. So that for each of these areas, one of the outcomes you want is for people to understand where they are individually at the outset of the course, and then that lays the groundwork for them to understand where they are and, and what they have and know and feel and so on by the end. So that along the lines of what just got said for that one, I'd like, I would like to get introduced to a way of reflecting personally on my own listening habits and so on and just be, have that degree of awareness to bring that in and carry it through the class. Mm -hmm. Great, great, and that 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 could that could fall into the skill category as well. Um, be able to do a way of reflecting on their own personal listening habits this is fabulous. And if I this is semi-related. I just finished co-teaching that course. I've, I'd mentioned it before in January and we asked at the outset for students to identify a goal for the course for themselves and at the end as part of the tradition we changed the traditional assessment away from rate this course and did you learn anything and all this. We started with the question please reflect on to what degree did the course help you fulfill that goal. And then we moved into the question, how could we, how could we improve the course and make it even better? And boy, that changed the dynamics and the thoughtfulness and everything of what we did. So I'm mindful of that as I suggest how you're laying the groundwork for people to know they've succeeded in the course individually and that they're also happy with the course as something they've invested their, their, their time and talent in. Yep. What else is, is popping? So, yeah, go ahead, Justin. Well, I was going to say, is kind of in addition to the prerequisite element in terms of the knowledge, I think that there, people have to have a sense of what the session is about. You know, sort of that, do I know what I'm going to be participating in? Um, so I don't know if that falls under knowledge or if there's actually <laughs> not to adjust the form, but is there another row that is expectations? Um, well, when it comes to their bed and, and it would be something they'd need to have beforehand. So when it comes to their better understanding the people they're listening to specifically as it relates to the conditions that, that we listed out last time for success, when it comes to their better understanding the people they're listening to, um, what do they need to know in order to better understand the people they're listening to? Why they're listening to them. Mm -hmm. Okay, why this is important. What do they need? What do they need to believe? What do they need to value? They need to believe that the goal they have for the taking the course is achievable. Mm -hmm. We talked a lot about that in the in the next couple of in the, in the many next bullet points. Mm -hmm. um, in that in that summary sheet. I, I had an experience yesterday. I was um, presenting for a bunch of students at UW who were <clears throat> asking about classes. So I got to actually we did so basically we were asking 
um, questions. So I was kind of curious what they were going to ask. And um, one of the students uh, needed to believe that we were uh, people who shared their values. I mean, I, I felt like that. I'm, I, I said a bunch of stuff, but when I told people that I was a jazz vocalist, all of a sudden I had credibility. I don't know why that fact mattered to people. Um, all the other stuff um, about community organizing, that mattered to people. Um, some of the, the educational stuff, like the fact that I have this or that degree, it didn't matter to people. So it was more like the values piece mattered to people. Okay, and, and as we look at, so some of the things that we said they need to know in order to better understand the people that they're listening to is they need to know um, the stuff that they learned in the first class in the overview. They'd need to know each other. Um, they'd need to um, have ways of reflecting on their own personal listening habits. Um, They'd need to know where they are before, during, and after. They'd need to know why they're listening to other people. What else must they know to better understand the people they're listening to? They obviously need to know catalytic listening. <laughs> I think to know um, what we normally do, kind of like the, like the science behind giving advice and how that goes down fast. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, at the, the dance of giving advice so to, to because we can all think about what are the words we've been so accustomed to have coming out of our mouth and in those questions mm -hmm. and that heightened, a heightened awareness of that language versus these different questions I'm going to try mm, awareness of language awareness of, of, la of language that inadvertently is harmful And a way of knowing that is feeling it through all of the practice time that will bake into all those sessions where we play with what does advice feel like to be getting advice in a situation in the classroom or in between sessions. Mm -hmm. And then how does it feel when we're asking using catalytic listening? So, yep. So if we were to look just at what we've talked about right now and we were to turn that into content, so what they need to know, and we all of the things that we just listed, what are some, what are, what, what do we want, what we're asking here really in terms of our learning objectives is we want them to know um, what they've already learned in the 101 class. We want them to know each other. Uh, these are all our objectives. We want them to have ways of reflecting on their own personal listening habits. We want them to understand why they're listening to other people in this way. Um, we want them to understand um, that, um, that we have shared values between all of us, that this is something that all of us want, not just, uh, not just them and not just us as instructors, but everybody wants to be heard and listened to in the ways that we've been talking about over the past several weeks. Uh, more learning objectives, that they have the framework for catalytic listening um, in terms of uh, skills. Um, that they understand the science and the dance behind giving advice, um, that they have an awareness of language that is inadvertently harmful, um, and that they feel that through practicing over time. So if those are our learning objectives in that one particular area of them understanding um, people better that they're listening to, what are some of the content things that we can actually do before, during, and after? So during, we talked about opportunity to practice. And that's in real time with each other. And on their own. What Rebecca said about knowing the science behind the different ways listening and like why advice giving doesn't work versus listening, the you know, catalytic listening. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so that, that could even be um, reading beforehand, the science. I think that's content, mm -hmm. whether it's in person or reading. Yeah, reading, yeah. Con but, but Either before the first one or in between classes. But con content before, I'm thinking. I'd like to, could I say? 
Go, Jocelyn. Um, a slight reframing, possibly, um, because there is an aspect of the we really shouldn't be giving advice because it's harmful, negative, etc., which can sound to some people uninitiated like what you've always done all along sucks, which is kind of can help put people in a defensive posture. I would love an opportunity in the class to practice showing the net benefit of employing the catalytic listening so that somebody could say, here's what happens in the tr say, traditional dynamic of advice giving. Now let's practice it. Um, so they get some hands on and they can see it in action. And I think that kind of action is very, very positive and, and reinforcing in a way that we would like. Yep. Yep. We talked a lot about that at the last meeting about providing, and that's why the opportunity of practice with each other. Um, uh, I'm sticking in the during um, place, um, practicing uh, both what works and what doesn't work. Um, much of what we talked about during the last session was the opportunity to see and feel um, what we do from the very, very best of intentions. Um, and, and what that actually feels like personally to you and what it looks like in others. And in practicing that um, as well as practicing, okay, the, the, what, what it looks like when it's good. Um, but we talked a lot last time about the various things that we can practice. Um, I'd like to see practicing include situations they have coming up in their life that they're perhaps nervous about. So how to apply this catalytic listening to the car salesman you know you're going to have to be listening to. <laughs> not, not something most of us look forward to. <laughs> to the parent-teacher night. To, you know. What you're really saying is I'm not a very savvy car buyer. So I'm just, I'm just reflecting back to the car salesman. <laughs> so to ask them what what situations do you expect to find yourself in where listening, using this framework might result in a better outcome? Okay, let's practice that. I like that. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep, yep. Very, very much so. Um, well, I think also, oh, go, Justin. Well, I was just going to say modeling is really important too. They need to observe it. I mean, it's one thing to practice, but they need to see it and be able to watch it and hear it. Yeah. yeah. I think they need to know what they're listening for. Be explicit about these are, these are not by any means all the ways you will hear this kind of a value, but here are some of the key words that might indicate these are their values or these are the things that are concerning them. Um, so we need to give them those uh, prompts. That, that could be, um, and, and because we're talking content, we're talking very tactical doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Be, as we talked last time, we talked last time a lot about cheat sheets. Um, yeah. And, and um, so lists of what people, what to, yeah, yeah, lists of, of what to listen for. One of the other things that we talked a lot about last time um, was in, in the modeling place, modeling what um, good looks like um, and that we want to, um, one of the things that we assure people at the beginning of the class and we talk about a lot throughout because we're being explicit throughout is um, that the class to the best of its ability is designed and shaped and the instructor is modeling what we want them to learn. Um, and so the, there's overarching um, modeling the way we interact with them in every interaction through the lens of catalytic listening. What but I'd like to say, I'm sorry. Sorry. Susan. Uh, one of the things that's come to my th mind has been the fact uh, when in talking about the advice giving uh, issue is uh, that in practice practicing that one of the things that I have found really interesting is having reflection on how the advice giver feels after advice has been given. Uh, as well as how the catalytic, the person who's respond, responding to catalytic listening might feel. Because 
when you have when you give advice you 90 percent of the time you expect it will not be taken and so you leave the situation frustrated so i'm i'm just thinking that that is a model that might very well be a part of all of this because um it it goes to the why this is so important to to pick up and learn so. yeah yeah yes absolutely but, uh, I just want to, just because, Anne, thank you for, for saying that. And I, I think it's so important to, so one thing that they need to know, um, I guess, is that you're trying very hard to not put yourself into the conversation. So when Anne was talking, I was thinking, about when I give advice, it is suddenly now about me in this conversation what's important to me and whether what I believe will come through. I mean, suddenly you've just made it such that you've now, I think what Anne just said, I've now made it all about me and I have no control over the outcome because it's in someone else's hands and, and the a, a potential frustration of that. And the difference between being able to come into a situation to say, it's not about how to make it not about me, how to make the outcome about the other is a critical framing piece that that they have to hold. I'm wondering how this um, connects with Jocelyn's comment about meeting people where they are and being sensitive to their, basically their ego of, of, of past actions, you know, around past actions. This is the way I've always done it, you know, and, and, and you're telling me that I'm you're telling me that I'm wrong that they have me done that. And, and you know, may, maybe there's a connection there to we but you not that you know you're wrong, but, but your the outcomes have been such that it didn't feel good to you either doing this. You know, may, maybe there is a, a connection there as well to allow that transition from what you were doing to uh, listening, uh, be, uh, to have people not take it as a judgment on them. Well, the, the, the place that I'm going in terms of, of um, what, um, whether it's, it's a content piece or a, um, that before starts before they sign up. Um, and so it's not just what they need to have um, before the class starts, but before they even register. So um, the, the, the registration right now is, and I'm trying not to use bandwidth, so I didn't have my browser open, so I apologize for that. But um, asking lots of questions, I think, is, you know, have you been frustrated with? Um, you know, it, it, the, the line I always use um, that I'm waiting for the room where it doesn't get a laugh um, is we have all experienced um, saying either to ourselves or out loud, if you didn't want my advice, why'd you ask for it in the first place? Um, so, so if we've all experienced that, we get to touch on that in the marketing for the class, that's the first place of learning. Um, the, 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 first, the first place we get to engage people in a different conversation is, um, is using catalytic listening and reframing to shape the marketing language. So when, when, I, when I'm talking about modeling this and everything, I think we have a wonderful opportunity. Um, I can't say that that's what the blog post does right now, but I just think there's a marvelous opportunity to... Um, <clears throat> To, to use the listening in action and the reframing in action as the actual marketing piece um, because the reason they're in the class, many, many people have already said that the reason that they want to be part of these classes is because they want to learn to listen better. So, Hildy, do you mind uh, take, taking it from the abstract and making that an example so, so that my little brain can catch up with your brain? So when you, when you talk about the, the pre the pre-conversation, what, what does that look like? The marketing for the class. So if somebody's going to sign up for the mm -hmm. class, um, that some of the bullet points in what those promotional materials will say has, have you ever been frustrated giving advice? 
Have you ever been, you know, and I'm just riffing here. Um, uh, have, uh, so it is the, the, the acknowledgement of first, um, sometimes advice giving is frustrating. Have you ever felt like, have you ever felt the words, and I can actually probably pull up because we've done a class, we've done a flash class on listening. Um, that is a content piece that um, redone a little bit um, it can absolutely be a basis for this. That, and, and, and it flat out says, have you ever thought to yourself, if you didn't want my advice, why did you, why did you ask for it? Um, the, the reframing of that is um, sometimes uh, what we want is for people to, to come to their own uh, wisdom. What we want is to understand what's really going on. What, what's really going on when people don't take your advice? What's, what's really going on when, um, oh, wonderful, Susan, thank you. Um, why do people who ask for advice often yeah. argue, there you go, with the advice you give them or simply fail to do what you suggest? So during this class, you'll explore the following questions by experiencing them. What does it take to help people discover inner wisdom they didn't know they had? That's a reframe. Um, so again, if we can take those pieces and so people will know what to expect, they're not going to come in, um, uh, they will know that everything in, from the marketing, they need to know that, um, that this is what it's about. But I think, I guess my, my main point was this, that it needs to start with the marketing that when we say before the class, it starts with the very, very first interaction we have with them, which is the promotional stuff. Yeah. One, there's a word that's floating around in my head, and I'm not sure where it goes, is that the marketing can normalize their experiences. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, so we want to, so that this will, I think, help with Jocelyn's very valid point that we don't want to be shaking fingers at them, you're doing it wrong. Mm -hmm. But everybody experiences this, right. and here's another way to do it. Yeah, I think normalizing is, is, is the key word. Because we're still we're going to always oh sorry. Is Dmitri talking? Uh you, you froze up a little bit go go repeat what you said, Rebecca. Uh to I was thinking in the same space as Susan is no matter what, we're always going to get phone calls from family members, people in the universe. I need your advice or you're the expert. So that language is, is still going to be coming at us. But how does it make us feel when we are, oh, you're the expert. You have all the answers. You're the magician. You'll figure this out. And then you, you know, like, so even being so explicit and here's what's going on all and all and all the time. And, and your friend, your childhood best friend is still going to call. But I have so many wonderful times with my friend on the phone since I've used catalytic listening because she just vents crap every single time I pick up. <laughs> but for Abe, I'm, I'm losing listening. And like it's, you know, yesterday she did it. And I'm like, it sounds like you're, what you really want is, is a nice birthday for your husband tonight. You know, what will it take? So it's, it's noting that um, instead of doing, have you tried this or that, uh, kind of digging deep into that because we can all think about times where we have been in those places and those inbound phone calls and pleas for help will never stop. But what is possible if we're willing to hit pause on what we've been doing and play with something different um, when those, because we're still providing tremendous value without telling them, here's my advice on like the thing you must do. So, um, that language will still always be floating in the universe. And then I think in those moments, having our having participants in the class, being able to feel comfortable and confident to deconstruct with whomever they're using catalytic listening, here's why our conversation went different. And, and you know, that's where they feel confident in sharing out to others. So they aren't magicians, but they are being explicit. Those people a, a, good, a good story that I, I would share on that. I love that. That helps me a lot. Thank you for putting it in the concrete. And I don't know if other people could mute because I'm hearing all sorts of ambient noise. Do you guys hear that? I'm not sure if you all are hearing lots and lots of... Uh, oh, wonderful. Um, um, but I have... Uh, I did a retreat with a, uh, an amazing young executive director who has yet to turn 40. So to me, that's very young. And um, she has a lot of board members who are in their 60s. 
and they treat her like the, I call it the answering machine, you know? So what about this? What about that? What about this? And what about that? And it's just constant. And so for an entire retreat, six hours, they just pound her with, you know, one after the next, after the next. And I don't even know, you know, how many cocktails it takes for her to recover from that. Um, and I was just realizing that as you were talking that that phenomenon of the board turning to the executive director, like the answer person, um, that's what it feels like a lot of times to be a consultant or a mom or a wife. <laughs> Where is my, my black sock, you know? <laughs> Uh, or where is the leash for the dog, the retractable leash, you know, and you just, at the end of the day, you start to stack up all those times when you're like the answer to everyone's question and you kind of want to just blow your head off, you know? Um, so I think bringing that home really vividly for people is super powerful. And, and I love that you brought this in because it's terrible. And it, and back to my story of my awesome, it's like, you cannot sustain yourself in this work being that you actually can't so it's very powerful and so what I'm what I'm doing in terms of content is um, that during the class that the curriculum um, the, the the lesson plans de, de, moving from curriculum to lesson plan um, is is specific in the lesson plans um, is the particular chunk we're working on at that time. So if during uh, session three, we're talking about focusing on people's strengths, um, deconstructing explicitly why this is feeling good um, and being very explicit that when we say, wow, you've got a lot to work with, or wow, I really get what you're talking about here and I see it all. Um, explicitly why that feels good and that we bake that into each lesson plan so that's not just a generic thou shalt but in lesson three here's what we're going to teach and here's what we're going to make explicit about why this is why this feels good rebecca frequently talks about um i watched for two weeks while rebecca was explicit with people about why this feels good um in a million different settings um and, and a, a meeting that, that we were having just before this um, with Susan and Justin and Jocelyn about, um, about a project that, that the four of us are working on, um, the, 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 the baking in of why this feels good. Here, let me just be explicit right here about the science of here, of, of what, this, what this looks like. And, and we're not, you know, and, and the thing we're talking about today because people will be practicing this stuff in their life isn't about I'm teaching you catalytic thinking is no is my friend just called and she's bitching again that she needs to lose 20 pounds um, and and so I'm, I'm thinking that it's really important that we that we are explicit in the lesson plans um, I, I, I love that that why this is feeling good mm -hmm. We heard that from participants in the beta cohorts was even the desire because we were being explicit and then at the end of the class we deconstructed some things and we heard from people their desire um, to have wanting more pause in the moment in deconstruction. So yeah. they, they were hungry real time for the deconstruction. Yeah, very, very, very much so. What, what we had done it, um, in, in the the beta of the 101 was we had done a lot of practice, a degree of explicitness um, about the things that they were practicing. But th at the end, the final class, we pulled back the curtain and were explicit about the pieces that were undergirding the class. For instance, Dimitri's tech call with them ahead of time. Um, the um, the pre-class call that we had with them ahead of time. And we asked them, what do you remember about that? What did you notice about that? And then we were explicit about what was baked into that. Those are the pieces they said, we, would, we want those along the way. We don't want to wait to the end. We want to know it, it, this is what's going on right now and this is how this is showing up 
um, about how we're interacting with each other right now. This is why you feel so good when you're in this class right now. Hildy? Yes, ma'am. Um, well, and all. Um, I have to apologize because I need, I need to, to go and, and do another thing. Um, I have a, a meeting I'm going to. Um, a kind of uh, suggestion for a hook to, to see if this would make sense to embed in the various pieces as you turn this into content. I'm thinking of what Justin's been talking about, how it sucks to be stuck or the general suck, suckiness of stuckiness, I think is his wonderful expression. And I like the idea of framing this for students in terms of, with, in this part that we're discussing today, let's talk about how we can get stuck with this. Talk about your own experience. And then, and then that taps into maybe some of the science or principles behind why that happens. And then modeling or tactics or whatever to then become unstuck so that at the end of each session, they'll feel like they've explored the experience of being stuck and they're starting to explore what it feels like to being unstuck. So I like the stuck and unstuck, and I just throw that in your general direction, and I thank you for a fantastic conversation, and I'm sorry to need to leave, um, but I'll talk to you and see you all next time. You will. You will. Thanks. Thanks. I really like that suggestion. I mean, I think we all do have people we know, who, like Rebecca's friend, phone and bitch about the same things over and over and over, and you feel very stuck. Here right. I am listening to it again, saying, uh, mm -hmm. uh, it really <laughs> not knowing how to make that call different from the 20 prior ones. Well, Absolutely. and then there are the things that get where you're stuck in yourself. Mm -hmm. That 20 pounds yeah. is a real reality factor there. <laughs> it just, yeah. what was the exact phrase? Well, so what Jocelyn is referring to was when we were doing some planning work, one of the participants said, well, you know, I don't want that sucky feeling. Uh, and it just dawned on me, just everything we we're talking about. I said, well, you know, suckiness is really just stuckiness. Um, that, that the reason it sucks is because you're stuck. And so that actually means that you can get unstuck. And so, it, it, you know, I, that, that was, I, get, I think the phrase was actually, how often is suckiness really just stuckiness? Um, that was that was there. So um, and sometimes, sometimes it is. Sometimes it's not. Sometimes things really do suck. <laughs> so we're the WD forty of there you go. <laughs> conversations. Yeah. Um, I I actually had there were two elements that I wanted to follow up on. Uh, now let's see if I can remember them. Um, one of which is we've talked a lot about the listening side and I just want to make sure we don't forget the validating side the stating back side and and how you know, we talk about the things that we listen for but the really incredible phenomenon is when someone gets validated back with what and, and you get to say this is you know it sounds like the reframe um, and so the reframing and, and so um, I just want to make sure that we're, as we talk about making that explicit, um, or, or just making sure that, that that's a strong piece. Oh, the, and the second piece was um, going back to what people need to, to know, as we were talking about Rebecca and the, the sort of transparency and, and the meta thinking, and what you were sharing, Hildy, people have to know you're going to do that, because sometimes that jostles people. Like it's, you know, like, oh, pop, we're going to take a time out. <laughs> um, some people get, if they don't know that's coming, they, they can be surprised by a sudden shift in thinking. The, the being, the, 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 the time out for explicitness? Yeah. They just need to know that that's part of what they're going to experience. What I'm adding in the before column is be explicit about being explicit. Mm -hmm. Um, the other thing that, that um, and we talked about this again, and I did not have the opportunity to draw it and, and do it, but a, a big piece, and, and I would urge you guys that while the, um, to, to look at um, all of the summaries and to listen to the recordings of the past conversation. Um, the, um, let me just write down about being explicit. 
one of the things that um, we talked about um, uh, last time is that that this is a gentle cycle of um, ask, listen, reframe, reflect, ask, listen, reframe, reflect. Um, and the notes are all posted to the blog on Freya, and they are uh, they were posted to the Facebook group yesterday. So everything that um, comes from the notes um, are all in the Walking the Talk blog. You can subscribe there. You'll get a notification in your email. Um, and, um, in, in addition, the um, what are you working on here? I was trying to to see if I could unmute the one. Um, I just completely lost my train of thought. I'm sorry. Um, Where the notes are. The notes are. In here. The notes. The, uh, everything is posted in the faculty um, place on Facebook. The faculty group on Facebook, and everything is posted on the blog. Um, so you'll find that there. But the the power of um, that this is a class not just about asking and not just about listening and not just about reframing, but it is that that and and it's not a cycle as in and you know a equals b equals c equals you know this leads to this, but it it is being in that place of of um, of fluidity um, of of listening and reframing and reflecting and asking and listening and reframing. Um, I think I think one of the things they need to know is that this is fluid. That this is not linear. Oh yeah, that that's huge. Um, this is not a formula. We talked last time so much about that this is not a formula. Yeah, uh, and that it is a practice, not a perfect. <laughs> yeah, that's going to be that's going to be everywhere. Um, I, I want to be mindful of time. Um, I know that we were making up for a lot um, in the past uh, uh, that, that have happened over the past several weeks. Um, and that next week, what I, what I would like to ask of you guys is a couple of things. One, um, practice catalytic listening and let's share in the Facebook group for the faculty what you're practicing. Let's practice the practice of what we're going to be asking our students to do. We're asking them to share in their own cohorts Facebook groups what they're practicing. Let's do that with each other. And then when we, when we share our practice together um, during, during our time together, um, next time we can, we can shorten that up a little bit. Um, we'll also um, not have three weeks of awesomes to catch up on. Um, and hopefully the elephants are well fed and that I, will be that. I, I think those awesomes were awesome. Um, I, I have a tactical question. I'll probably just write it out, but yes. if each time we have a class, there is a separate Facebook group for that class and they continue it and people are continuing to take the next class and the class after and class after, we're going to have a proliferation of small Facebook groups where somebody might be in one group with one group of people and then in another group with a different group of people because they were in their next class and then another group. And is that going to um, dissipate the value of the individual groups? So something to consider. Something to consider, and then we can ask the participants and that we, question. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Um, and that's a good point, Susan. I, it's something that I've thought about is what's going to happen when we are, you know, 20, cla 20 classes down the line, and every one of them has its own little subgroup. Uh, are you even going to remember, and especially if you've gone from 101, 2, 3, 4, 5, you've got five groups that you're in, uh, along with instructors that are in. in okay. um, so what I'm going to ask is a couple of things. One, share a practice on the faculty Facebook group. Um, two, look at the grid um, and start filling stuff in. I, this is not magic. This is taking the conditions, uh, the post that I did yesterday, which is to, to the faculty group that had those three links in it. It had the link to the grid, it had the links to the conditions, and the link to, the, to, to what Susan shared in terms of what, what is this class all about. And let's start populating that grid with what is the content that will teach these things. 
Um, we've got lots of stuff. You guys have all been in classes. We've all got stuff that we've developed on our own. What is the content? What are the pieces? What is the process? What is the format that will accomplish these things? Um, we can share that together as well. We'll come back together next time and we will continue this conversation and create the content in a generic way. And then we are going to go in um, one by one by one by one and in detail turn that generic content into what are we going to teach in the first hour of session three? How are we going to teach it? What is it going to look like? What are they going to experience? What are they going to do? See Make you all same time, same bet, same bet time, same bet channel. Absolutely. Is there a moment for reflection? Anyone have something to share in terms of what is standing out for you from this conversation? I have to leave. I've got to pick friends up at an airport. <laughs> so then, then share your reflection and leave. Uh, I think it's wonderful that we talked about practices. We can do it in future through the group, but make Ooh. us mindful of how we're already using this was really, really valuable. And I love the stories. <laughs> Thank you, Jane. Bye. Sorry. <laughs> we seem to be doing this. <laughs> What is standing out for the rest of you guys? Hi. Um, what's standing out for me is how valuable it is to have things that are, sorry, Cosmo's barking, uh, concrete examples after abstract statements. So I'll, I'll just keep asking for that. Uh, I don't think I'm the only learner like that. Uh, my brain will, I love, I love my clients always tell me like, that's really cool. What? You know? Um, and so now I'm experiencing that. <laughs> so great. Great. Anyone else? What's standing out for you guys? And by the way, Andrea, I think that that's really important for um, the content in all three places. Um, it's part of the being explicit. It's the, it's the what's really going on here, and here's an example. Um, so I think that's a really important piece. Uh, I, you know, one thing that jumped out at me and I actually put notes on because I'm doing some curriculum development right now <laughs> on some other things was, um, Jocelyn had made a, some comments about sort of the, the wraparound and it just struck me that when you do catalytic listening, which is actually what we do when we open a session and we say, what are people's expectations? Um, <laughs> you know, it's just another version of that. Um, that every time we do that, we are setting a pin into that question that we can come back around to, to say, hey, this is what was important. Are you feeling like you're progressing towards it? Um, you know, so that it's not just, that you, you get to hold the space of not just asking the question and sort of letting them go off and feeling like it actually was a good conversation and great, but being able to actually come back and say, you know, I remember hearing you say this, is that we went and just that the analogy of that to then thinking about a course too where okay if we said these were the expectations then my evaluation at the end should really just be did we meet those expectations that we agreed upon <laughs> yes or no and how did it feel getting there yeah one, one of the most powerful things you guys experienced this in immersion um and um our classes experienced all of it is um, not only are they sharing in the pre-class call, this is what I want to get out of it, um, but talking about that during the first day and then coming back to it at the end and just saying, okay, here's the list you guys came up with. Um, did we do it? How, how, you know, how far are you feeling? What is next for you in this piece here um, is really, really powerful and especially I love that question, is, is the what's next for you? Okay, if, if, if this did what you wanted it to do, um, is that all? 
And, and what's, right. what is that leading to? What's next? Again, the practical um, demonstration would be helpful at that point. Um, just, but I, I think that's a really important thing because it's not just did we meet your expectations, but was there more? What was it? And how does that, how are you going to use that or how can you use that? Yeah, yeah. It's the reflection piece. Anyone else, something that's standing out for you? Trey? And I find myself very self-reflective today. Um, probably because the, the examples that are coming to me are very personal, and so I'm, I'm, not, sh I'm not feeling 100% um, in a space to share everything. Um, there is a sense of what it means to understand without having to be understood. Um, and how that opens up creativity and possibility. And to me, in, the mo in this moment, it's feeling pregnant. <laughs> It's very full. It's very um, on the edge of I think okay, let me see if I can do this. It it's 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 like Yeah, ha that comes when you realize that, and I'll speak accountably, when I re realize that, that it can be whatever I want it to be, that the conversation, the space, as a whole creative space, and that's what this feels like. Mm. It feels honoring and interactive and full of possibility and it's like holding the, the flashlight down the tunnel and we're going in and yet at the same time that going in is a coming out. Um, yeah, it just, it just feels full and, uh, I'm just grateful to just be kind of a fly on the wall of the conversation today. So that's, that's sort of, that's where I'm at. That's very, very big. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. And it's, it's powerful and pieces of what you said, I'm scribbling down in the, what people need to know. Um, because it's big, yeah. Uh, the, the what it means to understand without having to be understood is such a big part of what this is and so different. So thank you for that. And Dimitri, Rebecca, what's cooking for you guys? Um. Like Jane, I'm really glad you introduced the uh, what are we practicing as part, which will now be part of all of our conversations and uh, um, the sharing of the stories, but also us thinking more intentionally in all of our conversations, um, even in our own heads, you know, catalytic listening to ourselves and, and making that explicit that we will be just like we start with awesomes, we also add that in, no different than we do in our classes. So. Yeah. Well, I'm, 
you know, some of you know that I nearly died last month, and I came within really quite very close to it. And it was uh, not a pleasant experience physically, but more importantly, I've had a complete reversal of my approach to life because I simply don't know how much is left. And, um, and that, has, that has been sort of an undertone for today's meeting for me. That's why, like, like Trey, I really was fairly quiet. But um, I'm finding, I'm, I'm coming out of this conversation thinking this is something I can apply um, the catalytic listening to myself too, because I have an awful lot to kind of come to terms with. And um, I will not be living a healthy, uh, a healthy, vibrant lifestyle again. Um, uh, that's just not there. I'm medicated and vigilantly watched over by doctors and, uh, and, um, I think I may have told one or two of you, my father was an Olympic champion hypochondriac, and I'm now entering into his world. <laughs> and uh, so, so this has been really important to me to just understand that, that I can actually apply this to this time and this shift in living. And I think it has a place in the future of creating the future as well. I think there's, there's a, uh, there's something about this change that is um, certainly relevant to people in my age range, and um, and definitely I think it's got it's it's got a, f a direction that I'm going to sort of think about now for a while. So, thank you, thank you so much for sharing that, and I'm just so glad you're here. I just I, I revel in every moment with you, and always have so. Thank you for that. And you're part of my reflection, and that as I was watching the uh, um, the Brady Bunch here uh, uh, earlier, and you were the center square, and I and I was thinking that this is a, 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 a that that teaching and learning are so much the same, and that it never ends, uh, and uh, you know that that to have you part of this family and to have you part of this thinking here uh, was just felt wonderful. Uh, and, and, you know, you, you, you and Trey were both talking about being quiet, but it's not just, you don't have to be saying it. Uh, 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 you are clearly in this and you're absorbing this. And when you do say something, it is really, um, insightful and 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 uh, open to more thinking. You know, opens me to more thinking. Uh, I, I believe that more and more that we learn. And I, I know I've said this before. We, we learn by teaching, and uh, we're teaching others how to teach here. So um, I'm just grateful. My reflection is how many times I heard each of us say we. When we teach this, we have to, we need to, we should, we need to think about, um, that's, um, that's just, that's big. Uh, that's, that's my awesome, my reflection, my everything, so. Andrea, what did you just do? Because all of a sudden, the painting just appeared behind you. I mean, it just literally, you, <laughs> it just rose up behind you. like. <laughs> so I, I, I am one of, I, I like to work in bed, okay? What can I say? Uh, I work in bed a lot, and I, it's my most comfortable place. So did Franklin Delano Roosevelt, apparently. Um, and um, so I try to hide it from all you. <laughs> in bed, yeah. Uh, besides the fortune cookie. So uh, I try to mask it, you know, uh, and keep people from knowing, like, this is my pillow, you know. Um, so so I'll, I'll lean forward to keep it masked. And then, and then as I, I get more and more comfy and Anne's sharing and pouring her heart out, I'm like, I'm just leaning back and you're getting to see my, my bed headboard and my, my painting. So there you have it. That's, now you know. I'm, I'm uh, confessing. Yeah, we knew. We knew before. <laughs> 
Uh, all right, gang. Um, same bat time, same bat channel, next Wednesday, same time. Everything is posted in the faculty development group at Facebook. And um, if you need a private lesson in how to set notifications so you get an email of that, um, we are happy to do private lessons in how to get notifications on Facebook until I finally get around to posting a blog post on it. So um, thank you guys. This was awesome. See you next time.